Hey guys, so glad you're with me here on our midweek meetup. It is too beautiful to stay inside. Got to come outside uh, to do our taping today for our midweek. It's been uh, just beautiful yesterday. It's great today. It's supposed to be good tomorrow. It's going to be awesome on Sunday, so you don't want to miss it to be in one of our uh, services. Of course, we have online at 1030 there at the AMC Theater. Pastor Gwynne is going to be sharing actually uh, some, some powerful things on Sunday. So you don't want to miss that in the in-person service. But of course, online as well with YouTube and Facebook. So glad you're here and you're part of our online midweek service and midweek family. But I know many of you, uh, local or abroad, of course, are watching online through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, just a couple of quick praise reports before we get going a little further into what I'm talking about today. Uh, this past week, we had baby dedication and baptism right there in our in-person service. We were dunking and we were dedicating. Uh, and uh, we had three families, I think a total of like five kids, but uh, three families that were uh, part of that dedication process. It made it a special Sunday, uh, but then also just ending church with baptisms following right outside there, outside the, the movie theater and uh, the dining theater on, on AM, uh, AMC Theater there, 124 Scenic Highway. And uh, it was just awesome 12 or more um i know it was double digits whatever it was from and we had a handful of children we had a handful of adults just an awesome time maybe um even uh possibly uh, there might be some pictures here just uh, to show you that uh, a little bit of pictures from the event on this past sunday but it was great we'll be doing that again soon so i hope many of you plan to be a part of that be a part of uh of uh of course uh baptism baptism if you got babies hey we'll dedicate those also but uh, it was a great day and powerful last couple of days from last couple of Sundays, should I say, from Easter now to the following Sunday. And this coming Sunday is going to be great also. So you do not want to miss it. And the last Sunday of the month, we have a special guest. His name is Osby Berry, and he's a music guest going to be with us. He's a part of a powerful church out in um, Oklahoma. And he's going to be with us, and we are just pumped. That's April the 30th. You don't want to miss it. Last Sunday of this month. And so uh, plan to be a part in that 1030 service. He'll be ministering and working, should I say, with our uh, worship team on the Saturday prior to the 30th. And then they're going to come in and have a great time with us in service. And so Osby Berry, his wife's going to be with him. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day. So uh, be there. But uh, uh, just a couple of things I want to talk to you about real quick. I've been just, just considering and thinking about, you know, what Jesus did after the resurrection. Um, I'll even speak a little bit about it on this coming Sunday. Um, You'll hear that uh, online, but uh, but also just thinking, what did he do? What, what what was next? You know, what was next? After the death, burial, resurrection, let's just talk about the next. You know, he showed up. He did a couple things. He showed up and he showed the way. And that's what he challenges us to do, to show up and show the way. We don't need to be people that retract or recoil. We need to show up. And then our example needs to be something that it's obvious that we're directing people in the way they should go because, you know, Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Well, you know, that's what we should be doing. There should be a family resemblance when, that, as we live our life, that we should be showing up people that are intentional about being there, being in the moment, and then leading or guiding by our example and then our words. That's the proper, proper flow, action, then words. A lot of talking, not a lot of action, horrible example, doesn't lead the way, shows the wrong way. But action and then your fo your words follow that. You know, I've, I've said it many times. Wish I had a dollar for every time I've said this or spoken this quote from Francis Assisi. But he said, preach the gospel everywhere you go and then words are necessary. Use them. That's saying action first and words follow. Not words and then maybe action, but, uh, but be a doer. And then also then your words become genuine and authentic. So Jesus showed up and he showed the way. You know, in Jesus showing up, we know the Bible tells us in the Old Testament as well as the New, how that God uh, was on time. And his son, Jesus, as well, was some, someone that was on time. Uh, the scripture says in Psalm 46 and 1, and when I say on time, uh, what I mean by that is uh, he was present. He was available. Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge, a strength, and a very present, meaning on time, not too early, not too late, right on time, a very present help in, in trouble. So he's right there with us. And Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 said, Jesus is the same yesterday, our yesterdays, our todays, and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, we serve a God 
that also, also showed up in that example in Christ, because here's the cool thing about Jesus. D Jesus didn't yell his love from heaven. He didn't say, hey, God wanted me to tell you way down there that he loves you. Jesus didn't shout his love from heaven or shout the love of the Father from heaven. Jesus showed up and he showed the example of his love and God's love for us on the earth. See, Jesus showed up. Isn't that powerful? He showed up. And that, that lets me know today that Jesus is dependable. He's one to be depended on. Uh, he's one to be uh, trusted. He, he's on time. He's faithful. Do you know Jesus, after the resurrection, he spent more than five weeks, uh, right at close to six weeks, here on the earth after he was resurrected. The Bible speaks of that, how the people saw him. He was with them. He was among them. He was eating with them. He was spending time with them. He showed up. Boy, it's so awesome. What a great testimony to not just hear of an urban legend of, of a Jesus that actually lived, but we know he actually died. But then there's this urban legend that he rose from the dead. But there are eyewitnesses, hundreds of eyewitnesses that saw Jesus after, saw him crucified, Noon to be crucified, saw him prior to his crucifixion, preaching and teaching and healing the sick, but then saw him also after he had ministered, he had died brutally on the cross for us and then was raised from the dead. Eyewitnesses that went to their death, not recanting their faith, but as martyrs, they died believing and not just something they heard that they were that they were told by someone, but they saw with their own eyes the risen Jesus. We are byproducts. We're a downline, if you will, of folks who saw Jesus alive after death, walking, talking, uh, living, and 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 eating and doing life with with his disciples and with his followers. See, Jesus is to be counted on because he spoke about that six months before even his death. He was talking about how he was going to die and be resurrected and that the temple would be destroyed but raised up in three days. I mean, there are just so many Old Testament and New Testament scriptures that speak to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Jesus, that that was God's plan. And Jesus is dependable. God can be counted on because what God says happens. Jesus died and he, hey, everybody, he rose again. And we know that he spent, as I said, right there, just shy of or right at about six weeks. It's close to 40 or so days on the planet after his resurrection. And what did he do when he was with his disciples? See, that's important. What did Jesus do? Well, number one, he eased the doubts. See, because Jesus is to be counted on. Well, Hebrews says of him that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't waver. He doesn't change. He doesn't wake up on the wrong side of the bed. He's not, he's not a, 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 a fickle Jesus. And, and that speaks to, to the faithfulness of our God. Our God is not fickle. He's not up one, and down, up one day and down the next. He's consistent. He's solid. The psalmist, I've already read it to you in Psalm 46, that he's a refuge, one to be one we cling to in the time of storm. He's a strength that can withhold us. He, he's not an all-powerful God that doesn't care. No. And he's not an all-caring God that has no power. See, the enemy is going to try to convince you that God cares a whole lot. Boy, he's, he's loving but he's not strong enough and somehow keep you thinking that God's weak. Or the enemy is going to try to convince you that God's all powerful, but, but he has no compassion. He doesn't care. That's why he's not helping or answering your needs when, when we feel like we need them met. The devil is a liar today. Listen, after the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, what do we see? Jesus, come on, somebody out there said, Jesus showed up because he is to be counted upon. He is to be uh, depended on. He's dependable. He's the same yesterday. He'll be the same today and the same tomorrow. He is on time. And not only that, he reflects the heart of our God where the psalmist said that our God is a refuge. You cling to your God in the time of trouble, in the storm. He is strong enough to hold you up. He's present, meaning he's on time and he's in it. I love that it says he's in the trouble with us because God in the trouble with us is still better than being somewhere else without God. You know, I've said it many times over that on your worst day with God will still always be better than your best day without God. Being in the fiery furnace with God there in the middle with you or in the lion's den with God in the middle is always better than being in the best place, most best, best uh, uh, circumstances. With God, not only are all things possible, with, with God, you can make it. You can make it. And so during the time uh, of, of Jesus showing up, he eased the doubts of his believers. Even Thomas, that we kind of consider the most doubting of all of the faithful, uh, of all the disciples, Jesus showed himself to be faithful and dependable. 
and Thomas believed and we believed and Jesus even said, even through Thomas believing, where Thomas said, I believe, Lord. And Jesus said, blessed are you because you, be you, you see because you believe. But he said, blessed are those who haven't seen with their eyes, but yet they believe. Thomas saw him. Thomas went on to live a life of faith and died a martyr's death. He was ran through with a spear in India for his faith. He didn't, he, he often doubted, he often questioned during the life of Jesus, but after he didn't, and he was willing to die for the cause. Why? Because he was so courageous? No, because he knew what he'd seen. He knew what he believed. We're byproducts of those that have actually seen and believed a risen Jesus. So come on, we're a part of what Jesus said. Those that don't believe, or should I say that haven't seen, but yet they believe, blessed are they. Come on, we're blessed today because of it. See, Jesus showed up and he calmed the doubts of his followers. And then he also gave them directions for the future. He didn't just shout the love, he showed the love here on earth. See, Jesus is still near. And, 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 and when he gave him directions and, and uh, talked about the future, it was, the, it was the, the Great Commission. You know, go and make disciples. But see, being here on earth to make disciples, you gotta believe because the Bible says the very core of pleasing God is believing that he is God and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. So, so while we're here on earth, we know he showed up, but we gotta show up. How do we need to show up? We need to show up knowing that God can still, God still hears our plea. He's still near to us. He still responds and he still is able to heal our hearts. I mean, Jesus showed us. I mean, he was, he heard, he, he, was, he was the example. Our God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we confess the name of Jesus, not only still hears, he still heals our hearts, he still responds, he's still near to us. And, and then Jesus not only showed up, come on, say he showed up, but then all of a sudden, all, all, also should I say, he showed the way. He showed the way. Jesus gave example of how to model and to live life. Jesus made time for his relationships. Well, I love the one story in Luke chapter 24. I'll talk a little bit more about it on this coming Sunday. But I love the fact that there are two disciples, Cleopas is one of them that we find out about, but two of them are walking on down a seven mile walk to, to the city of or town of Emmaus on the very day of Jesus' resurrection. And they are just broken, downcast. The story goes on to say from verse 13 to 21 of Luke chapter 24, that uh, Jesus meets them on the road. They were not able to see. Their eyes were restrained from seeing him. But he asked them and he ministered, asked them what was going on, why they were so depressed, why they were so broken. And then he even encouraged them to talk about it. And then he reveals himself to them. See, Jesus not only not only showed up, but he showed the way as being an example of one that knew how to give, give in relationships. So that's important. We, it's, it's so easy in the day that we live to not be, be givers, but, but you know, there's a, there's a special verse. I, I love it when I say a special verse. It's something that, that happened more than once and the, sp the scripture speaks to it more than once, but I love it in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 on down through 21. It's the story of the feeding of the 5,000. But let me just read the first couple of verses there of Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. It says, when Jesus heard it, he departed by, from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And what they, what they had been hearing was uh, that um, Jesus was preaching, he was teaching, and many, many things, of course, uh, uh, healings and things were following, uh, of course, his ministry. But, but uh, here the Bible says, and when Jesus went out, he saw, he saw this multitude that followed him to do, into a desolate place. It said that when Jesus heard, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them. So Jesus showed up and then he showed the way. What, how, what's the way? The way is to be moved with compassion, genuine, authentic care for others. Jesus was moved with compassion, the Bible says in Matthew 14, 14, and he healed their sick. sick. You know that statement, moved with compassion there in the Greek, um, that word you know, connotes the idea of, 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 of a deep, tender feeling, feeling, deep, tender feelings and, and, and tender mercies and affection, compassion, uh, sympathy. Um, it, it is a direct motive, do you know that? Many of the miracles that Jesus brought about to change lives, many of those miracles were direct. Um, uh, direct. The motive was direct from him being moved by compassion. Actually, they were close to around five or so where it says, and this is one of them, being moved by compassion, he ministered to the need. Being moved by compassion, a deep, tender mercy and feeling of, 
of, of, of uh, a significant deep feeling of affection, compassion, and sympathy. He was moved to, to minister. See, Jesus showed up and he showed the way. We need to have that depth in our relationships. We need to have that depth where that we're, we're moved in our heart for people. And let me just say this, Jesus showed up and he showed the way. And now you and I as followers, we're called to serve. We're called to serve, to show up and show the way. And who, who do we serve? Well, you know, you wanna start right where you have the, the greatest opportunity and hopefully a, um, a, a level of integrity, not perfect, but, but integrity. And that's with your family, those that are right around you. Show up and serve, show up and should I say, show the way and serve your family. Serve your coworkers, those who you're with on a regular basis that you, you work with, they see you often. And then from there, show up and, and, and serve not only your family and your coworkers, but, but at your church. Uh, if it's hope in life, we, we encourage you um, to, uh, to serve, um, to not only serve in your church and serve your coworkers. And, and the way you do that by having compassion and, and, and being caring and, and loving, never being too busy to show you care. Um, take time in those relationships to, 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 to say by your action, then your words, that there's value there, that you value the time with your family, you value the time with your coworkers, uh, you value the time at, there at church, that you're not just one that takes, you're not just a receptacle, but that you also, uh, also release or you give. You're not a pond that only catches, but you're a river that flows with, with relationship, with love, with compassion. Um, we need to be followers that show up and show a way to our communities and of course to our cities. We're called to show up and show the way. And so I challenge you today, that's what Jesus did. After he lived, after he died, and then after he was resurrected, Jesus showed up and he showed the way. So I pray today that he'll do the same thing and that we'll follow the example of our Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can live this abundant life that Jesus said, the enemy wants to steal it from you. He wants to kill it out of you. He wants to stomp it right out, destroy it from it ever being evident in your life. But Jesus said, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. There's these things the enemy wants to do. But here's the two things. Jesus says, I've come to give you life. That is relationship with Jesus, with, with your heavenly father through Jesus, and then the abundant life, which is the above and beyond ability to show up and show the way. And that's by serving and having a deep, heartfelt, genuine um, sympathy and compassion for others. So let's, let's get out there and, and be the body of Christ. Come on, let's get out there and be his hands extended, his feet that's walking, his, his voice walking. Let's be the Bible that folks are reading and let's let it be authentic and genuine to say that, hey, we're living in a way that, what, that, G, that people see that Jesus showed up and he, he showed the way and we're following that example. May the Lord bless you, keep you, may his face shine upon you. He be gracious to you, lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and cover you with the name of love every day of the name. And that's the name of Jesus. And Jesus provides hope for today and life for your tomorrows. God bless guys, love you. See you this weekend at Hope and Life, online at 1030. Or hey, more importantly, see you in person at AMC Theater at 1030. God bless.